Welcome back for another video. For this one, I've put together a free hit draft for Double Gimmick 34. Lots of you have said you're using yours this week, but for those of us without it, or even saving it, if nothing else, it's a good idea of the best team for the Double Gimmick in my opinion. There's some huge upside differentials sprinkled into this team. If you've still got your free hit and your bench boost, then it very much depends on how your bench looks this week. If your bench isn't very good this week, it makes more sense to build towards Double Gimmick 37 and bench boost then and free hit now. Anyway, let's get into the team. Starting off in goal, which is Pickford, and I know what you're probably thinking here, they just conceded 6 to Chelsea. On a free hit, it generally makes more sense to have outfield players from the best teams like Arsenal, Liverpool and Palace. This was the Gimmick 34 keepers table from Monday's Players to Buy video. Pickford ranks 4th. They've got a home double, the main one being Forest at home first, followed by another home game to Liverpool. Goodison Park can be a very tough stadium to visit and I wouldn't be surprised if they can hold Forest goalless. A big reaction needed in their bid to avoid relegation. In defence it's a back three of Trent, Gabriel and White. Trent just back in time for the double. I do think there's a couple of factors in selecting him on the free hit though. Number one is Bradley and his injury and number two is Trent's minutes in Europa League. If Bradley's declared fully fit after his injury substitution last match or if Trent plays 90 against Atalanta then he's a riskier pick in which case I'd buy Van Dijk instead who's a safer option. Double Arsenal defence, the two most attacking defenders in Gabriel and White. Another tough call on the free here is going for two midfielders and a defender or vice versa. I've made an alternative draft that's got two players different to this team which I'll show later. That one's got two Arsenal mids instead. Gabriel's taken about as many shots in the box as the rest of the entire Arsenal defence combined so he's an obvious pick over Saliba. And White's got an attack and return in him, more likely an assist in his case. He takes up dangerous areas at times down the right wing. Much like Trent, the free hit's all about your risk tolerance. Since it's a one week punt, there's always a temptation to back these types of players. There is an outside chance that Tommy Astley starts one game in right back, assuming that White plays the full match against Bayern in the Champions League, which seems likely after coming off early last match. So if you don't want to chance it, then Gabriel on Saliba, or go double Arsenal midfield. It's low chance, but it is possible. In midfield, it's Saka, Salah, Luis Diaz, Elise, and Eze. The armband's on Salah. Admittedly, not looked his sharpest in recent weeks, but it's a double game against Fulham and Everton. You've got to keep faith in Salah, I think. In his four starts, since returning from injury, he's registered exactly four expected goal involvements. Only Isaac and Palmer have fared better. He's taken 23 shots, which only Palmer can beat with 25, and he's taken 16 shots in the box. A double up of Luis Diaz, who's Liverpool's second top scoring player after Salah, with 8 goals and 6 assists. Since game week 19, he's not gone longer than two games without an attack and return including a couple of double digit hauls in there. He's in over Darwin, who I feel is a bit more prone to an early substitution. However, with Jota available, it could be either that starts one game on the bench in favour of Jota. If you're a Liverpool fan, let us know in the comments your take on Darwin versus Diaz. Saka's a pretty obvious pick, so I won't talk about him too much. I don't see any reason to go without him, unless you're really chasing maximum upside, in which case Havertz and or Erdegaard instead. He's on penalties and corners from the right side, and only Palmer and Watkins have got more points this season. I've backed a Palace double up with Elise and Eze. Elise's averaged 5.8 points per match he's played this season, Eze 4.2. For context, you can see just how impressive 5.8 per match is, comparable with the likes of Foden and Gordon over the season. However, obviously he's only played 13 matches, so less than the others in the list. He's got 6 goals and 3 assists for 9 returns in 9 starts. Eze's missed a bunch of games himself of injury. He's got 7 goals, 3 assists, 19 starts. Palace might have turned a corner after such a monumental win away at Anfield and it's a pair of home games for their double game week. This season, West Ham's 61.46 expected goals conceded is third worst after Luton and Sheffield United. Newcastle's 54.51 XGC is 14th. Or was as surprised as anyone to see a back line of Burns, Share, Kraft and Murphy keep a clean sheet home to Spurs, but I don't see that being a recurring theme. Up front, it's a front two of Solanke and Mateta. 7 goals and 5 assists for Mateta this season and he's hit some form recently. There is the element of risk going triple Palace though in attack. If they were to be two low scoring games and that's three players with a low ceiling, hence Cunha is a very good option as well instead of Mateta. Scored a brace last match or he could replace one of the Palace mids. I'll run through the alternative draft with a couple of players swap around in a sec. Wilson has the most points in the season for Bournemouth with 168 back in the 2018-19 season. Solanke's already on 156 with 6 games to play. Another staple pick on the free hit for me. 
I think the five staple players are Solanke, Saka, Salah, Eze and Gabriel. Beyond that, there's not much between the rest. The bench is Saar, Cunha, Eight Noru, and Mikalenko. About 1.4 mil in the bank here, so it should be a very affordable draft for anyone. However, it's easy to free up funds at the back of the bench if needed. There's no way the bench goes as deep as Mikalenko in a double gaming realistically. Cunha and Eight Nori were two players that didn't quite make it into the start in 11. Arsenal will be a tough match for Wolves, while the Bournemouth game does have potential. Eight Nori's fitness is still a bit of a question mark as well after not making the squad at all last match. So this is the alternative draft which has Munoz and Havertz over White and Elise. This gives you double Arsenal attack and reduces the exposure to triple Palace attack. The downside is Munoz who on paper is a lower ceiling pick than White. Let me know in the comments which one you prefer, the rest of the team is exactly the same. As a quick reminder of how the free hit chip works, if you make a transfer and then activate it, that transfer will be reversed the next game week, and you can't roll two transfers into a free hit. So if you had two and you've got your free hit active, you'll have one free transfer in game week 35. I've also had a few comments before from those of you that accidentally took a minus 40 hit and forgot to activate. If you ever do that, you can still wildcard all free hit and all the hits are wiped away. Thanks very much for watching. If this was helpful, hit subscribe. There's more FPL content to come later in the week, including my team selection and the experts video. See you soon for the next one.